So before I get too far into this video, um, Marjorie is in the craft room with me. Yes, I'm talking about you. She just looked at me. <laughs> uh, she is in here chewing on a chewy while I am in here recording and Michael's out in the dining room on a work Zoom call. So we're hanging out in here together. So if you hear like a that noise, uh, that's just Marjorie chewing on her chewy. As you know, I finished this spin <laughs> of fiber from Wild Wolf Farm, and I took a lot of pictures, took a lot of video, and I've spent a lot of time working with this fiber and thinking about this fiber, and now it's yarn, so I'm, I'm thinking about what to make out of this. So... I did calculate the yardages of each skein. Um, and so on each skein, I wrote the weight, the uh, yardage, and then did some unit conversion into yards per pound for grist. So total yardage for all 12 skeins here, little bundles, is about 960 yards, which is a, a great amount of yarn, but not quite enough for a garment, for a sweater, for my size. So the next thing down that I'm thinking about is a shawl. And so what I'd like to do is play with these colors I'm going to show you again the colors. I'd like to play with them. I've got right, red and yellow and coral, and um, this one has multiple colors blended in. This one also has multiple colors blended in. We've got brown, uh, gray, like a charcoal. There's a lot here to play with. And so what I was thinking is, is my brain immediately went to color work and certainly 960 yards is not going to be enough for a color work sweater for my size so then i'm thinking color work shawl okay so i've played around with color before in shawls i'm wearing one now that's knit with two skeins of yarn and so there's a light purple and a dark purple. And you can see that there's there are color exchanges going on, right? So there's work being done with the colors to create a pattern. But what I'm thinking of is not working with colors in rows, but stranded color work, which is typically done in the round. Um, by the way, in case you're wondering <laughs> what shawl this is, this is one of my designs, D Hard House Designs. This is uh, my Rock Garden shawl. And it's, it's a great size. Um, it's knit with two skeins of fingering weight yarn. So it's around the 800 yards mark, right? And I have 960, so it can kind of give you an idea of size, right? I'd like to go for this size of shawl. Now, of course, um, this yarn is more of a DK weight than a fingering, so it's going to be a little more that's going to affect um, the size and things here. But, okay, so I'm thinking color work. I don't want to do color work in rows because I don't want to have to purl while holding... Um, two strands of yarn. 
moving it to the front and the back of the work or keeping it in the front and whatnot. So I remember in one of the podcasters I watch, um, I remember someone mentioning something about knitting a color work shawl in the round and staking it to cut it open. And I want to say that podcaster is Skein Deer Knits, Ellie of Skein Deer Knits. If you don't watch her channel, you should. She's extremely knowledgeable and uh, has a creative mind for understanding uh, techniques that are not intuitive, but to her they seem to be, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, I, I learn a lot from watching Ellie of Skin Deer Knits. So I, I couldn't find the episode. I couldn't remember if it was her or if it was someone else or whatnot. So I, I started doing more searches and found lots of different ways I could steak a color work shawl. Some of those methods involved making fringe. I'm not interested in fringe. Uh, for this project. Uh, there were some about um, uh, other methods, but so, okay, all right, that's fine. So I wrapped my brain around the problem. And uh, this is what I love about math. I teach math for a living at a two-year college. And, and part of what I love about math is figuring out something that, that once used to be mind-boggling and now it just seems so obvious. Uh, and knitting has a lot of that, right? <laughs> so I decided to do some practice before actually casting on with the, the hand spun yarn. So I found um, some scrap yarn in my stash and I decided to knit up little swatches of <laughs> knitting a shawl in the round and staking it. Um, so what I'm going to do is switch the camera around and show you these close up so I can share with you what I learned through um, these samples and my plan moving forward. And hopefully that means I've worked out all the issues and this will go off without a hitch. All right, so I have two swatches here um, because this is this is the first one I did, the first one I knit. So the idea is that um, this is the center seam down the shawl, and these are the two sides that imagine Alicia's head right here and her arms coming out <laughs> um, on the shawl. So uh, ignore the ends. I just cut them off. I did not weave in my ends on these little samples. They're a little bit distracting. <laughs> um, so basically what I did is I, I cast on the number of stitches here for the uh, increase sections so that stitches here and then one down the middle each here and then I'd be increasing as I go rather this way because I'd be going in the round. <laughs> So what I did is I cast on all these stitches and I also cast on the steaking stitches all in one go. So I cast it all on here and then knit in the round. Honestly, the first sample I did, I forgot that I shouldn't be decreasing or I shouldn't be increasing on every round, but I should be increasing every other round. So that one ended up being a circle <laughs> instead of a triangle. So I ripped that one out. Um, but yeah, so so these sides were together here, and I was knitting around. Okay, great. Um, I put a little ribbing on the edge just to help it lay flat. I did block this. I wet block this so it would lay flat and hold its shape. I wanted to see how that would affect the steak here. So I added, I did six stitches for the steak on this one. And I did a crochet chain here on either side of my steak. 
So you can see the ends here that I cut. It's a part of that steak to cut this open. Okay, so I was really happy with this when I first saw the sample, but I was a little saddened by this dip right here. And I thought, okay, I think that's going to bother me. In a big shawl, I've got these really nice, clean, straight edges, and then a dip right here. So I tried something different. I thought, okay, let me try this instead. So I changed two things. One was how I cast on. And it's hard to see. It's unfortunate that the part of the... So I left off here with the black and white speckle. So that's what I started with here. It's unfortunate that it does make this hard to see as opposed to having a solid color up there. But it is more flat across here without that dip. So I think what I did here fixes that problem. And the other change I made was instead of doing six stitches for the steak, I only did four. So I also like that. I mean, I don't like these ends from where I cut it. Um, but I like that it has this cleaner edge to it. So I'm a little concerned about this mini fringe <laughs> from cutting the steak. Is that always going to be a problem? So do I want to have more stitches in the steak and maybe like fold this over so they're hidden? I don't know but I do like um, on the back side here the fact that there's less of a rollover um, I think it's a little cleaner also on the end here with the corner with this folded over and it being a triangle it kind of sticks out the side here especially here like this is from the folded over bit so it's folded over because this was still being increased. So it gets folded over and then it's sticking out the side here. So having less means, less of a steak means I have less hanging out the edge. So I do like that. I love that I was able to close in that dip. So the way that I closed in that dip was instead I cast on just these stitches. I worked across them then I cast on, worked across again, then knit the steak stitches. So that means I got to have two rows in here of work before starting actually knitting the steak, which is fantastic. So I have an idea of how I can tackle even setting up color work to knit this in the round with a steak. And so that's, that was phase one, was just figuring out how I could even do a color work pattern in the round for a shawl and steak it. So, yay. The first part I have figured out. <laughs> so for the color work pattern itself, I originally was thinking I would do something with, um, with the neutral colors as the background and the colorful ones as the pattern and then I would create some kind of color work chart with leaves and pumpkins and you know fall just make it very fall themed as you can tell I've, I've decided to change directions <laughs> um, I still like that idea but I think I'm gonna save that for di for a different yarn in the future with this one, I was thinking, oh gosh, I, I really feel inspired by the sea glass sweater and uh, the, uh, what's it called, all, to, all together now shawl. 
um, and just these, like every other stitch is a different color kind of color work where it's really just, it's not really a color work chart pattern, but really it's just exchanging colors throughout and, and playing with that. And I thought, gosh, that would be, that would be really fun to do with these. Yes, I love you too. <laughs> so I'm leaning more toward that. So I was thinking, okay, how am I going to decide how to do these yarns in, in a color repeat for the shawl? Do I want to do like an ombre effect across it? Do I want it to be all mixed up and jumbled? Do I want to make a pattern of those like the All Together Shawl? What do I want to do? And then I thought, because, <laughs> because Michael and I were watching Critical Role, which is a Dungeons and Dragons, um, there's a group of actors who play Dungeons and Dragons and they stream it on YouTube and we were watching that the other night and there's a lot of dice rolling in Dungeons and Dragons and I thought oh there we go I could just roll dice to get a random effect so I came in here and counted the skeins and I have 12 because I have seven neutrals and five dyed colors so I have 12 of these and I have a 12 sided die. So I could roll a d12 to decide what color to use next. And then I could roll it again to find which color to pair it with or something like that. Okay. Well, then I got to thinking, oh my goodness. Okay. Now I really want to do this dice rolling thing because then the colors are not going to be spread out, which I need to be okay with. There's going to be some clumping and some spreading and some clumping and some spreading and I need to be okay with how the dice rolls and how the colors play out but I think it could be a really neat possible visual aid that I could bring into class when I'm teaching about randomness and share with them this story of how I chose the color order by rolling dice and that you don't get a pattern that's spread out and balanced and you get random and that that's what random looks like. So this has got me really excited and so that's my thought for this shawl. I'm ready to cast on, I'm not ready because I need to wind up all the yarn into balls, label them with numbers and such, but but I'm I'm ready mentally for this project. I'm very excited. Um, I'm hopeful that it's going to turn out as I plan. But I also know that not everything goes according to plan. So I may need to adjust things as we go. So we'll see. So I have 12 colors. Yeah, why didn't I arrange it like a clock? I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the dyed yarns be 1 through 5. So the red will be 1, the coral 2, the Multicolor blend three, 
the Merino Bamboo Blend four, the yellow five, and then we'll move into the neutrals. So we'll have, we'll go into the browns. So this one will be six and seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is that Icelandic, so it <laughs> doesn't spring back at all. And twelve. So these are going to be my number assignments for my colors. So when I roll my D12, my 12-sided die, I will be picking uh, colors at random. Okay, so I've used up a few more colors. So over here are yarns that I don't have enough yardage left to possibly do another row. In fact, this one I just finished. It's attached to my shawl. I didn't even have an end long enough worth cutting off. I got so close with yarn chicken. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six colors that are finished. And so I only have six colors remaining. So I've gone down from using a 12-sided die to choose from 12 colors, down to a 10, down to an 8, and I only did like four rolls with this thing. <laughs> um, and so now I'm down to six-sided die which is your standard die that you find in games um, but yeah so out of these six colors I'd say three of them have like one row left on them <laughs> um, yep 
Uh, the yellow and this light gray were chosen the least so far. Um, but yeah, basically the plan is just to use as much of this as possible in this one project. So what I'll do is uh, I reordered them 1 through 10, so now I'll reorder them 1 through 6, and I will roll again. So, I have um, bound off this shawl. Um, I started at the top and worked my way down. And then I added this uh, eyelet border. And I have um, bound off. So this thing is off the needles. And... I have used up a really good chunk of the yarn, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors that, uh, oh yeah, there's a ninth color, here we go, where's the end, oh it's on the inside, um, there's another color, <clears throat> it's one of these darker grays, that um, the end was so short, it wasn't even worth cutting off of the work. Um, so there is a color that I like completely used. <clears throat> Nine, 10, 11. Oh, the 12th color's in the other room. Silly me. Um, but uh, yeah, I have this yellow and this darker gray and a little bit of the light gray. Let me go grab it. That was silly of me to leave it in the other room. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so this is what I have left. Um, and I felt like this eyelet border had enough going on with the colors and things that I just didn't want to continue it any further. So I decided to bind off. Um, and I did roll for the light gray <laughs> for the bind off. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do next is um, do the crocheting up the steak, uh, crocheting on either side of where I will be cutting this, and then I'll be cutting it, um, which is nuts. But um, before we get into that, so I decided to go with this eyelet border because I wasn't sure how I didn't want to fight with ribbing with color work. And I ought to be honest, at this point, I am not happy with this eyelet border. It just looks, it looks frilly. Let me show you. It looks frilly. And I'm not a frilly kind of person. So, I'm thinking that the way to get around this ruffle edge look is to just block the crap out of it and just block it so it's just stretched out, which is the look I wanted to go for is with the eyelets, I was thinking it would keep with this fashion of every other stitch being a different color. And so it would be, you know, red in a space and red in a space. And it would kind of mimic that pattern down here in the border. But I needed something to help keep the edge from rolling. So, but I'm, at this point, to be honest, I'm just not super happy with my choice to do that. And I'm hoping that I can find a way to salvage that. <laughs> Um, and I'm hoping that blocking will, will be the ticket, um, to help with that. If not, then, I don't know, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. If I get to it, my hope is that this will work out fine. So with the eyelets, instead of, uh, holding two colors at a time, it was one color at a time. So this edge is split, not because I cut it but because I worked one 
row around and then cut the color off and then joined a new one and worked around. So this was essentially worked flat, um, <laughs> but I never turned around and went back the other way. I just always kept going around in the same direction. So this is already split, but I'm still going to come through here with the crochet and I'm going to crochet along this edge, which I have a feeling is going to be really fiddly since it's already split, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, and I think I'm going to go in with the gray for the crochet. I f I'm pretty sure I have enough here to go down and back with the crochet. We will see. So this is how big it is. And hopefully you can see the frilly ruffliness that I was talking about. Um, I'm not in love with it. <laughs> um, but uh, so this edge with all the ends on it is one of the upper edges. So you can see, I can back up enough that it is going to go out my wingspan on either side and this is the middle center decrease the stitches there and yeah so I love I just love the body of this shawl and it's so warm with holding two strands together um, for each row just this is a, a really nice it's not super thick but it has a nice thickness to it where if I were to wear this out on a cold windy day I the wind would have a hard time getting through this thing which is good because I mean we we do have cold windy days in this area um, so <laughs> yeah um, and then here's the edge with the steak so in the beginning I didn't put the start of the round in the middle of the steak I put it off on the edge of the steak <clears throat> so all those ends there I wove in and I wove in toward, toward the side so they won't get cut in the steak and then I realized oh if I just put <laughs> the beginning of the round in the middle of the steak where I plan on cutting anyway then I bet I don't have to weave in any of these ends so these are all sticking out because at this for this part it was a uh, working magic loop and then I got to a point where I could actually work all the way around I had enough stitches so all of those ends are on the inside <laughs> so I have ends on both I have woven in ends I have ends sticking outward and I have ends sticking inward and I have this section down here where I was working basically flat and it's already split. So with this steaking, with this crochet that I'm going to do before I cut the steak, I, I'm kind of getting to try all these different things. So with the ends woven in, with them sticking out towards me, with them sticking inward and away from me. <laughs> um, so I guess that's good. I get a little sample pack with this but um, yeah so it's a good size um, I'm happy with it so from top down the middle seam is yeah you can see it's oh, I'm so excited to cut this I'm so excited to cut this open and see what it looks like completely laid out flat. Um, I don't think I'll get to that step today, um, but I'm gonna start the crocheting so I can work toward it.
I finished one side of the crochet. I started at the bind off edge and went all the way up. And so now I need to flip it around and go from the cast on edge over here on the other side. Um, I think this one side probably took me like 20 or 30 minutes to crochet up here. Um, I think it was easier here where the ends were on the other side as opposed to being out. Um, and then the top part I found the most fiddly where I wove in the ends. So yeah, now I'm going to flip it around and go back the other way and see how that goes. I decided to move out to the dining room table for the cutting, so I have more of a workspace. I'm going to use my little scissors, because um, I only want to make little cuts at a time, so I'm not just making a big cut and then accidentally cutting something I shouldn't. Um, so yeah, let's cut this shawl open. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> are these ends coming out of? Does it matter? I don't think it really matters. Okay. Definitely do not want to cut uh, the front of the shawl. Okay, now I gotta make sure not to cut my reinforcement. Okay. Whew. It's open. Oh my goodness. Okay. shape I was going for. It is not straight across here. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Hmm.
Okay, I'm gonna put this in some wool wash and soak it and block it and hopefully that takes care of the issues I have with this shawl. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the shape of it. So we're gonna see if I can block it out and get the shape I want. Oh, the beauty of blocking. I just stretched this out and laid this out. It's actually quite nice outside right now. Um, and so I made this top edge straight, pretty close. I'm gonna get it to dry outside for a little bit and then I'll bring it in and maybe actually pin it down. But woohoo, thank goodness. Blocking, it's amazing. So today is December 30th of 2022. Today's my father's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> uh, and I have officially finished my hand spun color work shawl. It has been a labor of love and there are things I like about it, and there are things I don't like about it. And I'm going to share all of that with you now. So first off, let's take a look at the finished object. I'll put in a picture here of it draped over the back of the couch. Um, you can see that it's been blocked a couple of times. It looks, I think, very nice right there. I'll also show you in person, I, well, in person, live right now as I'm recording uh, the shawl. And for the most part, I love it. The only thing I really don't like is this top bit here where the shawl started. So you can see it does bump up in the middle here. And when I was blocking it, I went ahead and sewed together the uh, top edge. This was supposed to go out and lay flat, this yellow bit here. This is two sides sewn together. It was supposed to come out and lay flat. Um, but it just had this horrible shape to it. And it was better when I bunched them up together and I was trying to block it so that this would be flat across the top edge. and. It's not, and I, I blocked it twice now. I don't think that's going to come out. But I have a sample. I did do a couple of samples of sticking a shawl like this. And so that was, I can't remember if that was the first or second one, but see how there's a little dip in here. So I took and sewed those two edges together because that seemed to make it a little bit more flat. And here's another one, right? And it doesn't, it's not that bad, right? And you can see it's got the beautiful triangle shape to it. It's fantastic. So I think a couple of things happened. One, um, my tension, <laughs> um, my floats, on the back side, which look really pretty. Uh, I think I just didn't give myself really enough slack, especially in this beginning part. I think in the beginning, I was knitting pretty tightly. Um, and so trying to get this to stretch out and block out is challenging. Hence the poofy part in the middle. Um, but after that, it's great. <laughs> um, I also did this, um, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Eyelet. I worked some eyelets here on the edge. Uh, because I didn't want the edge of this shawl to be curling 
and so I thought I would do some kind of border around this. I decided to go with lace and just the simplest lace you could possibly do. Uh, and when it was on the needles, I hated it because it looked really frilly and ruffly. And you can see after blocking, it is not frilly and ruffly. So blocking did remedy this issue I was having. And now this is fantastic. So yeah, my, um, my tension was too tight. Um, I was not able to get these stitches to stretch as far as I wanted them to. So if I <laughs> let the top edge roll over, then I get a nice flat edge. Of course, this isn't quite as long as I would like it to be, to be wrapping around like this, but it's a good size. So I am, in the end, happy with the shawl. Pretty much no one is gonna see that top edge anyway if I wear it like this. So it's totally fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's red and orange and grays and browns and it's a it's this pop of color that I don't have in my wardrobe. I wear a lot of black and gray and blue. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> and so uh, this is just a nice cheery pop of, you know, really bright warm colors. So Overall, I'm happy with it. Um, I'm not 100% happy with it because of the cast on part of the shawl. But the steaking went well. Um, you can see the ends, you know, of, of the cutoff edges here. And I'm sure that'll just sort itself out as I wash this and wear it. Um, I'm happy with how my floats look. And of course there are some places that don't have floats um, of where I had, like here you can very clearly see pearl bumps. Um, with the randomness, this color uh, wasn't paired with another color for a little while because I kept rolling that same number. <laughs> and so it was just knit, 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 knit in this color. Um, so it was nice to have that break every once in a while, but yes, I am 90% happy with this uh, project. <laughs> it was just very simple color work. I just knit every other stitch in a color. Um, I didn't want, you know, to do patterns like snowflakes or zigzags or anything like that. I just wanted to keep it really simple, but something that was still stranded color work, because part of this project was practicing, right? Knitting in color work, sticking color work, um, and, and yeah, I am extremely happy with the yarn. So I spun this yarn and it just has this amazing level of consistency that I did not have, you know, a year ago or two years ago. I feel like as a spinner, I've really leveled up and I'm very happy with uh, the yarn that I have created. So, uh, because this is color work, um, stranded color work, it is nice and thick. So this is going to be fantastic to wear on a cold, windy fall or winter day. Um, it's just gonna be so warm. Uh, today it's in the 40s, 40s and 50s degrees Fahrenheit. It feels like spring outside right now. So I'm not gonna wear this shawl. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So I did block it, like I said, twice. Uh, the first time, um, it seemed like it was going well. And then 
um, I draped it over the back of a chair and it got lumps and bumps in it from draping it over the back of a chair, especially before it was completely dry. Uh, so I had to block it again <laughs> to get all of those lumps and bumps out of it. Uh, and I'm glad I did because it straightened it out a little bit more. So I think if I continue to, you know, every time I wash it and block it, just really focus on straightening out that top edge, maybe eventually I could work it out there. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks for coming along with me on this spinning and knitting journey on this project. And I've had a lot of fun. I hope that you have enjoyed watching the videos that I've put together for you. If you're trying out new things in your crafting, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. Are you trying a new project? Are you trying a new technique? Are you trying a new craft? Are you redoing something you haven't done in a while or putting a new take on something? Tell me about it in the comments below. I love hearing about what it is you're doing and it also helps feed my creativity. So uh, I appreciate you all and I'll see you next time.